drop, drop it on the random. What up, y'all? Welcome to another episode of That Time in Hip Hop, a show about the nostalgia, the history, but more importantly, the preservation of hip hop music and culture. I am your host, Vegas of Hip Hop Now Podcast. I got with me, as always, the partner in crime, the homie Tone of IntoTheDome.com. What's good, brother? Everything good, man. Friday is getting closer. Sip some H2O. Yeah, I got a I got a little double cup joint there, but ain't nothing in right. there. Got a red cup though. Yeah, it said no no red cups. You know, I moved to the suburbs. They got to be the you know the picnic. <laughs> red cups is hood only. No uh, doubt. But you know, if y'all watching for the first time, you know what I'm saying this is a show where we do things like this. You know, just to bring up the the history of events or uh, albums or artists or whatever it may be. And we want to implore you to go and watch past episodes because it's great if you check out what's new, but sometimes you miss things or you may say, yo, why don't they do only built for Cuban links? He got the shirt on. Well, guess what? We already did it. You know what I'm saying? That was the first episode. Uh, But if you missed the last episode, the last episode was about the album Supreme Clientele by uh, uh, Ghostface Killer. We talked about it from front to back, how it came about, how we felt, the impact of it, where was the woo around that time, everything. So if you really want to get caught up on that hip hop classic or just watch the show to reminisce, check it out. It's a really dope episode. I'm pretty sure if you're a hip hop fan, you will enjoy it. Um, So let's get right into the business at hand, man. We like to do a little segment called this week in hip-hop and this week in hip-hop man we have two legends in the hip-hop game who have birthdays on the same exact day january 14th uh 1965 slick rick was born and january 14th 1968 ll cool j was born tone slick rick ll cool j I mean, people who are hip hop fans already know, man. But tell us about these legends on their birthday, man. First of all, man, you know what? We could do an entire show about Slick Rick and L Cool J's birthday, man. So real quick, L Cool J is one of the architects of hip hop. Let's not get it twisted, man. You know, he's a young kid, and we did the Crush Groove episode, you know, last year, and talking about his significance in the game of being basically the person who jump started Def Jam. You know yeah. what I mean? And if you know about hip hop, which most of you guys listen to this do, Def Jam is a staple in hip hop. And if it wasn't for L Cool J, and if he would have bombed out, not being who he ended up being, you know, hip hop might be different. So let's just say that's how important L Cool J is. You know, we're talking about over 25, 30 years in the game, legendary. Some of the biggest albums, some of the biggest songs in the culture. He's an icon. He's on TV. He's been on TV for over a decade or so now, you know, on, on, on shows and things like that, movies. And I mean, this is L. Cool J, man. I don't need to say too much more. If yeah. you don't know much about Uncle L, any young listeners who sleep and say, man, you know, L ain't that nice. That's probably because you remember some of his later, later work. But please go back and listen to. LL Cool J in the heyday of his career, 85 to about 95 with Mr. Smith. Let's do that and then come back and talk to me. You know what I'm saying? But one of the greatest MCs of all time, I don't think you can mention a top 10 without LL Cool J in it. If you read a list and LL is not in the top 10 in hip hop, the person who did the list didn't do their due diligence. That's facts. Mm-hmm. Um, Slick Rick, man, look, storytelling has been one of the biggest things in hip hop history, man. And Slick Rick is pretty much the face and the poster board of MCs who took storytelling, man, as a big part of their craft. When you think about Ice Cube, he was a great storyteller. I'm sure a big influence came from Slick Rick. You hear Scarface and a lot of his stories, Nas, of course, Biggie, of course, you know, and a lot of, even on up to Kendrick Lamar, listen to Good Kid, Mad City, and listen to some of the stories uh, that Kendrick did, you know, so, the influence of Slick Rick has gone on uh, close to 30 years. You know what I'm saying? And who doesn't know children's story? 
and Hey mm-hmm. Young World and stuff like that. And just on the side note, my favorite Slipwood song is The Moment I Fear. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, man, two legends of the game, two people who have influenced, I want to say hundreds of MCs, man. So what can you say, man? Happy birthday to two of the gods of this game, man. What, what's your quick thoughts on that, man? Yeah, man, real quick, just to just to piggyback off what you already said, man. We talking about Slick Rick, you know what I'm saying? He's he's somewhat the the father of storytelling. Obviously, he wasn't the first, but he really mastered the craft. Mm-hmm. His debut album is entirely a collection of stories. Every song is a story, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Which is something that you don't typically get um now, you know. You don't really have too many Slick Rick songs where he's just bragging about who he is. You know what I'm saying? He always has some form of story to tell. Uh, Great Adventures of Slick Rick, just is one of those pillars in hip hop as far as hip hop classics go. Uh, like you said, influenced some of the biggest MCs in the world from the Notorious B.I.G. to a Tupac to a Nas to an Ice Cube, um, probably um, in some respects. Um, you know, he, he is just the way he didn't just tell a story. You know, he also played multiple characters. You know what I'm saying? When you think about Eddie Murphy and Nutty Professor and stuff like that, you know, Slick Rick was doing that for hip hop. You know what I'm saying? If he was talking about a girl, he voiced the girl. If he was uh, getting bullied or whatever or in prison in the moment I feared, he probably was the big dude that was talking. Um and it was dope for when you think about it back then he didn't even have to work that hard when you think about how a lot of mcs was rhyming but that was just his style um when it comes to ll cool j man what more can be said the man was for a long time the only artist that went platinum every time since the 80s all the way mm-hmm. up to the 2000s every album this dude dropped was platinum and this was before people started really accusing him of having a fan base of women exclusively, which is not really true because most hip hop fans could think of a ton of uh, hard tracks that, you know, it's LL Cool J that are clearly not for the ladies. Not to say that the ladies don't like hard hip hop either. Um, but nevertheless, man, this is the dude who's stood the test of time for many years, uh, went through many decades of different changes in hip hop, you know what I'm saying? Yep. From from 80s style rhyming and gestures and your body motions to, you know, uh wearing army fatigues with 14 shots to the dome. Uh just just everything. LL was there for like every era, the bad boy era, all of it, which is kind of more of his speed anyway. Um and you know, like he's arguably the goat for all the different things that he's mm-hmm. been able to do and accomplish. In this game, man. So when you talk about January fourteenth, yeah, you know, you you got two two gods in in the hip hop game who changed it for a lot of individuals, made it easy for a lot of individuals to eat. Um, you know, happy birthday to Slick Rick and to LL Cool J, man. Can't forget them. Don't wait for them to be gone. Celebrate them while they're here. You know what I'm saying? And they got a lot of great music. And just one last thing, you know, if you heard Tone say, yo, go listen to LL from this date to this date, also do this, because a lot of people don't do this, right? They go listen to stuff, but they listen with the 2019 air. You know what I'm saying? I've heard Kendrick, I've heard Illmatic, I heard all this stuff. You have to think about when LL was doing what he was doing, and then go listen to what else was out. And then Mm -hmm. you then you have a bar that says okay dudes were rhyming like this and these were the dudes who were best at it where does ll fit you know what i'm saying and was anybody doing what he was doing and then that's when you can really see like oh now i see why people like them so much now i see why you have called them the goat you know or whatever the case may be but definitely check out the old school artists support them they need the streams as well so whatever uh but now we get into the part of the show where we focus in on the main topic at hand first of all i just want to say if you like what you hearing so far or you saw whatever don't forget to subscribe uh hit that like button leave a comment uh so we can see what feelings are with this and also more importantly share with people you know enjoy this kind of content 
because today we got another legend in the game. Mm. The dude who basically proved that hip hop can have longevity. Yeah. Short dog. Mm -hmm. Too short. Way past 10 albums now, you know. But Tone, set us off, man. Give us the knowledge, the science on Too Short and this whole thing, man. First thing first, you know, and let me say this. The first time I heard Too Short, you know, I laughed because if you're a fan of his music, he's actually very funny, you know. And I obviously didn't know how long this guy's career would last, but just backing up for a quick second, too short, pretty much is the face of Oakland hip hop. Now, we yeah. know a lot of people came after short. Of course, E Ford is a legend, and I think Mac Dre, a couple other guys later on became big stars. But Too Short is the first guy who really put that music in the trunk and drove around. And his first goal was to become a local star. See, a, mm -hmm. lot, of, a lot of young people don't understand. They try to go uh, zero to a hundred without understanding all the, the different uh, lanes you should go in to get to a hundred. You see what I'm saying? Too short did what all MCs should actually do. First, get hot around your around your block. Then get hot around your your your, your entire neighborhood. Get get hot in your city. Get hot in your region, and then expand out into the nation. You know, and, and you know, master your coast, and then go by coastal and. And that's what Too Short did. You know what I'm saying? When he got, when he put that music in the car, he drove around and got his music out there. Before there was big record deals and things of that nature, Too Short was one of the ones that, you know, he influenced people. You know, when you think about when T.I. talked about selling music out of his car and Master P selling music out of his, you know, out of their trunk of their cars and things like that. Well, Too yeah. Short was doing that in 1985. You, you see what I'm saying? So from 1985, now 34 years later, He's actually still well respected, but that's how I started. When too short, um, doing what he was doing, man, it's just kind of amazing you think about it, because this guy has over twenty albums now, and starting with uh his his first album was called "Don't Stop Rapping." Now think about that, you know that's some foreshadowing for you. That's saying no matter yeah. what happens, I'm not gonna stop rapping because this is what I'm gonna have to do. To get out the streets of Oakland, you know, and that's what he did. He never stopped rapping. And man, what can you say with someone who never compromised their style, man? And we'll get deeper into uh to, to Too Short's career and his style in a few minutes, man. But you know, me, my first time hearing the really was the ghetto, you know, and mm -hmm. that's actually a very vivid song. And us being writers and, and me being into like history and poetry and that community also. Just listening, you know, I'll never forget, and just hopefully I'll quote this correctly. I haven't seen it or heard it in a while. But he said, even though the streets are bummy, lights burnt out, dope thing died with a pipe in his mouth. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that might seem very simple, but when you're from the hood, it's very vivid. Yeah. You saw crackheads walking around. You saw the violence and the danger. And everyone knows that Oakland is very uh is, is a very complex city because you have the Black Panthers and everything like that starting there, and you have a lot of programs for kids starting in the middle of racial inequality and the civil rights movement on into, you know, this kind of culture of, of violence that, that hit uh, um, Oakland. And Too Short was able to, um, you know, cap, you know, capture that in his music, man. But just, man, what can you say, man? What, what, what's your thoughts and when you first heard of uh, Too Short, man? Do you remember what song you heard, what album? You know, what was your impression, you know, as far as rapping? Because you're an MC, man. When I when I first heard uh, Too Short, it was um, Life is Too Short. But I didn't know his name was Too Short. I just thought the name of the song was Life is Too Short. And yeah. I didn't know who the hell that was. I was like, is that easy? Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. I, didn't know, right. I didn't know who that was. But it was it was catchy. His um his flow and his voice was like real inviting because you know you think about when a record like that came out, you know again where hip hop was, you know hip hop wasn't lyrically serious like that. Like it wasn't a 
it wasn't mandatory that everybody was this big lyricist, you know what I'm saying? Not back when this came out. Um, right. So it was it was fun almost to hear it. But okay. I think the first time I really looked at him like as, as an artist in itself and I started to take him a little bit more serious, like you said, was when I heard The Ghetto and I saw the mm. video because even though we had had records that spoke about The Ghetto, like the message and stuff like that, um, it was something about that song in particular, and then and it just be called being called the ghetto, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of touched home a little bit deeper than other records. You know what I'm saying? Because it felt like, even though he was in Oakland, you know, he was saying something that you know you can be in any ghetto situation uh, across the world and understand that. Okay, yeah. Uh, my crackheads do different things than your crackheads, but they all crackheads. You know what I'm saying? Right. Or, or we all hungry. So there's no, there's no state or you know borough or whatever to hunger. You know, you just hungry. Um, and I felt like he really captured the the feeling, the despair, um, and really brought the the imagery to you through his lyrics. And you know, I never really looked. To, to too short, especially at that time, um, to be like, oh, well, he's not that nice. You know what I'm saying? Lyrically. Um, because I felt like he's the type that, you know, he's like almost like an elder and you're supposed to listen to him when he talks. You know what I'm saying? Like Chuck D. Like Chuck D. flow is like he giving a speech. You know what yeah, I'm saying? He, he all over the beat. He's just giving a speech. And I never cried about that because it was kind of like, no, you listen to the lyrics. And that's how I felt with Too Short, man. So my first experience uh, hearing him was Life is Too Short. And the first time, you know, I really was like, yo, this, I like this dude was uh, when I heard The Ghetto. Uh, back when he didn't have his teeth fixed, for some of y'all who don't know, the original too short, you know what I'm saying? Like when it was yeah. really ghetto, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, he was really, he had, he was definitely had the, the, the look of someone from the ghetto, for sure. Yeah, yeah you know he, and, and even though I he think, started making a couple of dollars. Uh, yeah, I think that's what, I think that's what also drove it home when I saw the video, like, damn, this to get, yo, this to ghetto for real. Like, yeah, he, he, he was very convincing with the way he looked. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah, you know, early in this career, you know, we hear several songs and, and you know, The Ghetto and Life is Too Short. Th those were the two songs that I heard first, uh, similar to you. And then I remember uh, on um, Born and Mac, his fourth album, he had that track, Freaky Tales. You know what I'm saying? And that's when I was like, okay, this is where he's going. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, he had a nine minute song about all these different escapades in the hood, these escapades of women and all this wild, it's yeah. like a porn song, you know what I'm saying? So then it's like, me personally had never heard nobody, you know, rap like that. I was used to hearing the Slick Rick stories, you know what I'm saying? Or even earlier stories about Melly Mel, you know, and stuff like that. But I hadn't heard nothing like that explicit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah, this dude is wild, man. And it was funny. It had a lot of bass in it. And, and I remember watching that VH1, uh, Hip hop documentary years ago, a Snoop Dogg was talking about, you know, West Coast hip hop and the people that inspired him. And he said he remember people driving by playing Freaky Tales with all that bass and stuff in their cars. And it was just like he was like, man, I I, I got to rap, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> so 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 outside of Ice T, Too Short is one of the people on the West Coast that actually influenced the whole coast. You know what I mean? So because he he's the first major guy with a with a album on the west coast period a lot of people don't know that before him that's nobody because before him ice t had done two or three breaking break dancing tracks like rhyming on break dancing movies and stuff like that but he didn't have an album yet till like crime page came out a couple years later you know so two short 85 debut is like the first album by like a star on the west coast this is pre nwa this is pre easy e this is pre you know the Dr. Dre's and all of that, Ice Cube, any of that, it's, he's before all of that. You know what I'm saying? So let's go ahead and get that out the way just to let you know this guy's significance. He's before any, you name your favorite West Coast MC and two shorts before that. Yeah. So much. That, that's something, you know, people need to understand. And for any new listeners, 
you know, just if, if you haven't heard him before, you know, you listen in tonight to the podcast, go and put in um uh, the ghetto. That would be my starting point with him just to kind of get a feel. And then put in freaky tales and stuff like that so you can kind of get a feel of, of his humor. Because he's one of the funny guys in hip hop, you know, shorter than pimp. You know what I mean? So he had a lot of pimp rap. And, you know, Ice T at the time was doing some pimp rap as well. And then E40 eventually came and not really a pimp rap, but he still had that Oakland flavor and, and, and creativity like that as well, man. So, you know, check those out as far as like, you know, but what. I was gonna ask you this though, Vague. Um, did he have the too short have any features early on? We'll get these nineties features, but anything like early on that you heard with another artist that made you pay attention, or was it more the the nineties features? I think I think for me it was more the nineties features because like I felt like, you know, when I would hear Two Short's name, like, you know, when the 90s came, you know, you had Source Magazine, you had all these different things going on, all these new artists. And when they started working with him, I was like, damn, Two Short's still around? Yeah, um, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That, like, that was like my first thought because I knew, you know, I knew he was putting out music. Um, but, you know, when everything else is going on, you're kind of not, not there. I think, I don't remember features, but I think what's, one thing that did stand out to me, and this might have happened like 90, 91, I think, because uh, I don't remember when it came out, but when Ice Cube basically shouted him uh, out on Jacket for Beats, when he's like, uh, short dogs in the house, and you hear uh, yeah. Too Short like, what up, Lo? Um, yeah. I was just yeah. like, oh, Too Short. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, okay. Oh. And I think, you know what else? For me, not being... Uh, a fan like that that was like buying every album and staying and keeping up with what Too Short was doing, even though I like this music. Um, I think it's something to be said about a dude who, for one, basically still rhymes the same, never really changed. Yeah. Um, and it never really got old to anybody. And he's so well respected by so many people in the game. You know what I'm saying? From West Coast to down south to everywhere. Yeah. And he has the what well, he has the most albums, right? And uh, yeah, it absolutely does. And let me say this too. So first with the albums, Too Short has 20 solo albums, over 20 solo albums, and he also has four collaborative albums. He has two collaborative albums with a with a group he used to rock with back in the day, uh Dangerous uh Crew Click. And then he did two mm-hmm. albums with E40. So I think that he has over 25 albums, man, in, in a 34 year lifespan. Wow. So if you think about that, it's actually incredible. And also, he has quite a few platinum and gold albums. So, you know, on the West Indeed. Coast, people are buying two short albums. Like, he's he was a star. So let's yeah. not, he, he wasn't some underground West Coast artist. He wasn't Souls and Mischiefs or the far, far side. You know, big star. You know, and even to the point when you got to the mid nineties, first of all, you know, he had worked with Scarface and Pac and all these guys in the early nineties and all of them well respected, uh he was well respected to them. Now we go up to volume one, you know what I'm saying, with Jay-Z in the Hard Night Life and uh well not the Hard Night Life, but in my lifetime, uh he, he had real niggas uh on the road to riches and yeah. diamond rings. Real niggas do real things. And I'm gonna take my favorite two short verse of his whole career is the verse on real niggas with Jay-Z on volume one in my lifetime. Mm-hmm. You know, so then after that, this is 97. Also in 1997, rest in peace, Biggie. He on The World is Field on Life After Death. Mm-hmm. Dropped a dope classic two short verse on that with, with Biggie, Huff, and, 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 and Short. You know what I mean? So now you mm-hmm. got the AP track. The Biggie track turned right back around the next year, volume too hard in our life, and he's on a week ago with Jay-Z. Yeah, he was. You know what I mean? So, and he also did a song with Jay-Z called Six Figure Niggas. So that's three songs mm-hmm. with Jay-Z, a song with Biggie, and we'll get into all of the people he worked with. But again, matter of fact, I, I did write a few people names that I do want people to know how diverse he has been. I said Jay-Z, I said Biggie, Scarface, Bun B, E-40. The dog pound, Rick Ross moving on into the 2000s again. Yeah. Short still making music, you know what I mean? Pimp C, Snoop Dogg, Will I Am, Ice Cube, Spice One, Spice. He is like Spice One's mentor, by the way. 
uh, MC Bree. This is a this is one right here, babe. He did a track with Malik and Jamal illegal. Oh wow! <laughs> right, and he also got tracks with Eric Sermon because when Short moved to Atlanta in around ninety four ninety five, he used to rock with, with, with Eric Sermon a lot. Yeah, you know. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, man. So he did that, and and, and not to go too far left, but I do want to say this real quick. For you to start in, in 1985 and then as as recent as 2006, you do your you do the song Blow the Whistle. Yeah. It's like your uh and I doc and I wrote this down. That was his 16th album. So 16 albums in, you end up doing probably your biggest hit of your career. 16 albums in, 16 you albums. do a song, you do a song and it becomes a club banger. A club classic. They play that song now in in the club still to this day. You you know, just like it ain't nothing. If you go to a club right now, go to whistle gonna come on. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They gonna play it. You know what I'm saying? Certain basketball games, sports events, you'll hit an instrumental or you'll hit a blow the whistle. You know, I, I I was going out to the Charlotte Hornets games. I was hearing that for years. You know what I'm saying? So think about how many artists in hip hop came out and that far into their career, they were still able to muster up a big hit, probably the biggest hit. That's very impressive, man. Yeah, and I think the what makes it impressive that I think people got to think about because I think it's easy for them to say, oh, well, you know, he, he already kind of had a name. No, when you get a hit like that at that point in your career, that means you have new fans. You know what I'm saying? Yes. That means that's that's not just old fans coming out to support. That's new fans who's like, yo, I don't even know who sang this song. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, they absolutely, just, absolutely. They just going to discover, like, yo, but I like it. And then that's when, you know, we roll up on them. Like, that's too short. They got 16 albums. Uh, right. What, one thing I want to I wanna say uh, or we could talk about is the point in which we realized – that there was some form of longevity in the game. Um, I know for me, uh, and this is with Too Short, obviously, but I know for me, it's when he had the album Getting It Coming because a couple of hip hop publications were, you know, making it known like, yo, this is Too Short's last album. I mean, not last album. Uh, this is 10th album. Will it be his yeah. last? Because in hip hop, yeah. It was just crazy. We just looked at it like, well, he probably ended at 10 because what else can you really rap about after that? Because and, it, and, and it's called album number 10. Yeah, and it was called album number 10. And it was it was like a hallmark moment where we just like, well, this this is it. This is a retirement party, right? 10 albums. And, 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 and he had a retirement party. Yeah, exactly. He, before Jay-Z with the retired, but not really retired <laughs> with the Black album, um too short you know kind of was like yeah you know that that's probably it for me um and then i think it was like not too long after they came back like nah i'm gonna keep going <laughs> you know what i'm saying and why wait oh yeah well, three, it was three years later he did uh can't stay away so it, it was getting it the, the album number 10 and three years later he said can't can't, can't yeah. stay away can't you know stay away saying? like and a, and that, like a box that's fine. That doesn't want to yeah. retire and shit. Yeah. Yeah, except for the good thing about him again was some people who stick around too long, they end up compromising their their style because they want to fit in with each like if you're in different generation. LL Cool J fell into this uh, trap a few times, even though I love LL. There were times when it was like, okay, I'm from '85, then now I get up to like early '90s. I'm doing something like a phenomenon or something. I'm trying to blend in with the glossy puffy yeah, stuff. And yeah. puffy. Uh, except to produce that album and stuff like that. So it's like you're trying to keep up uh, with the artists in each era. Now, one thing about Too Short is it's like criminal, criminal do Jabbar. I'm going to do the Skyhook because I played in the 60s, 70s, 80s, <laughs> Skyhook. You know, and so for Too Short, his style, his flow, his subject matter, everything never changed not one time on no album. You know what I'm saying? So if you love his style, you're gonna love it all up to he decide he can't rap anymore. Like he's too old to rap, too old to perform. Because you yeah. know what you get for the too short joint. That's like when when I heard about him being on that Jay-Z joint, I'm like, yeah, I need to hear that track. You know what I'm saying? Because Vi already rock with him anyway. I know what I'm gonna get. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? There's not gonna be no surprises. 
You know what I'm saying? He gonna give me the short dog style. You know what I'm saying? I think that says a lot about somebody who's not gonna compromise themselves. So he's never gonna really let you down. You know yeah, what I'm saying? One, yeah, and, and one that's thing, exactly. And and one thing about him that um that you know when you think about it, okay, he has twenty plus albums. How how can he possibly go through decades of hip hop? And and not like compromise his style by changing. Why? Well, because his style kind of fits over any kind of beat, to be honest. Yeah. Because we've heard like too short over Eric Sermon beats and everybody, yeah. like almost anybody you could think of, where you wonder if it's gonna mesh, like just like just a week ago with Jay-Z. Like it didn't sound like too short would sound good on there until i heard him on there and it was and like it sound good on it. It's perfect you know what i'm saying he just has a he just has a flow and a charisma that uh matches whatever it is he's trying to do and he's he's confident in it and that's what and again like we said his flow is like listening to somebody who's teaching you something so you forget about oh well it does the beat match the lyrics and all that technical stuff. You forget about it because he draws you in with his lyrics. And you and know you what? Focus in on what mm -hmm. he's saying, and um, and he does it so casually. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. Um, I mean, you know, it, it's it's too short. Is like your favorite uncle to come to the cookout. He gonna he gonna slide you to the side. Y'all gonna drink together. He gonna talk about chicks with you. You know what I'm saying? He's the one. He gonna he gonna drive up in a caddy and everybody run up to his car. He's your favorite. He's your favorite old school cat in the family. You know what I'm saying? And that's yeah. the way hip hop treat him. You know what I'm saying? That's the way hip hop legends even treat him. My mom was saying uh, just the other year in Vegas, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Nas like, brought him up on stage and like was real excited. You know what I'm saying? And this is Nas we're talking about. And, and a lot of MCs treat too short like that. You know what I'm saying? Because he's an old school cat because he's 52 years old. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So he's an old school cat who's been around forever. And a lot of the MCs, you know, a little younger than him and a lot younger than him. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like when Snoop Dogg called himself Uncle Snoop, well, it's really Uncle Short. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's not really Uncle Snoop. You know what I'm saying? So, and people look at him like that, man. So, yeah, like again, it just says a whole lot when you look at what he's been able to do and sustain, man. And I think that this podcast is important tonight because I actually didn't realize what I knew, but I didn't know because, you know, I don't talk about Too Short a whole lot. But when I actually look back into his career and his life, I was like, wow, man, 34 years? I was, I was trying to think of anyone from either coast mm -hmm. with that kind of longevity. And I'm telling the honest God the truth. First of all, we know that nobody from the West Coast. And when I think about the East Coast, the, he actually started in 85. That is when LL started. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? As far as like, you know, LL and Short is kind of like neck and neck with their careers, except for. When the last time L Cool J been, you know, had a had a song like Bo the Whistle, it might have been 2003 or four, maybe, but it, it wasn't as late as Too Short last big hit, you know. And he's not putting albums out anymore. Too Short still putting albums out. Yeah, you know, he man? actually so he actually um, put an album out, I believe, last year, and he has like two follow ups coming out this year. Um, yeah, the pimp tape came. The, the pimp tape came out last year. Yeah, the pimp tape came out last year, and I, I think, I think the difference between LL's longevity and um, Two Shorts is Two Short is the father of uh, being a worker, basically. Um, yeah. LL's albums were like precious releases. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it was a big well to do every time an album was coming out. It wasn't coming out often. You know what I'm saying? At one point they were, but it was it was more so like, you know, it's a grand entrance. Too short was more like, yo, this album's done. <laughs> so it can come out because I'm working on another one. You know what I'm saying? And, like and Paul, hold, hold that thought okay. one second. Yeah. Hold that thought. I just want to I just want to ride your coattail or something what I was looking at just now. Just to give you an example. I, I, and I'm talking 2000s right now. I'm not even talking about the way he could secondly put albums out in the 80s and 90s. 2000, he did an album. 2001, he did an album. 2002, he did an album. 2003, he did an album. Pause. 2006, 2007, 2010, 2012. You know what I'm saying? Then it took some years off, and then he ended up doing 
doing another one in 2018, but I think during the 2012 and 2018, no trespassing and a pimp tape, he started some other businesses. You know what I'm saying? I remember seeing on Vlad TV him talking about it. So when we're talking about the hardest worker, too short, it's quite possibly the hardest working MC in the history of hip hop. And another tidbit for, for, for listeners or, or new fans or what have you, he actually produced most of his music. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't know that. Too short made most of his beats. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we're talking about over 20 albums, and some of them was coming back. Look, look at this 85, two in 1985, two albums in 1985. 86, 87, 89, 90, 92, 93. That's my point. I don't think nobody has ever worked harder. And like you say, a lot of times it wasn't with the backing. I mean, I think a few albums on Jive, but most of the time those were either small labels or his own independent label that he owned. So yeah, I think that he might be the hardest working MC in the history of hip hop. Now, who would ever thought that? And he's he's kind of on the low, like the the father of today's hustle, today's rap hustle, because a lot of what you mentioned he was doing it already back then like you said he had major deals and he had his own independent deals and it enabled him to keep his work out there you know what i'm saying so he just pumped out tracks and now you have cats who you know they got a major deal but they do mixtapes and they put all this material out this dude's was you know this dude been doing this since the 80s that's the think about part. that man it is that's crazy, crazy because i remember I remember when at one point Cox Record was doing a whole lot with major stars when you had like Jim Jones and Cameron and a couple other guys did projects on Cox. I even think uh Prodigy's H and I C two might have been on Cox Records or whatever. But I'm just saying all that to say 20 years before that, Two Short was already doing that. It wasn't nothing new. You know, but a lot of people slept on that. You know, and that's again, there's a lot of landmarks in his career where a lot of people didn't do what he did. Yeah. So, like, I mean, this, this I, I guess this is the thing with this, you know, with Too Short, with all he's accomplished, with all the work he's put out there uh, in the rap game, how he's respected by a lot of MCs um, in the game and fans. And I did this article about old school hip hop artists who are still active, you know what I'm saying, as far as making music. Obviously, Too Short is not slowing down. He doesn't care what's happening. Um, but it turns back on the fans most of the time. And and we kind of admitted that in some cases here. You know, this dude has 20-something albums. I guarantee you, you know, we probably heard maybe four or five, maybe. You right, know what I'm right, saying? Right. Like, maybe. And that's not for lack of trying. It's just more so it just wasn't something that wasn't happening. You know, when you hear, oh, he has 20 albums, I feel like, well, damn, yesterday I feel like he had only had 10. Now he got 20. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I, I think the the number one thing that I thought about when I wrote this article about old school rappers and longevity and hip hop and how we uh treat it and honor it and all that good stuff. Um what do you think do you think like with in two shorts case and obviously other artists who are now following in his footsteps like Anaz and Jay-Z who've already gotten to the point where they got 10 projects um do you feel like it's a good thing for for artists to keep going because they can sustain whatever it is they have whether they're super rich or they're just popular as a rap artist or or should there be a cutoff point um as far as you putting out music because you know not everyone's paying attention like they used to you know what if you're a true artist in any genre you never stop you know what i'm saying like if you got that love for it and let's just say it ain't even just for money let's just say you love making music you know then hip-hop for some reason we started this retirement talk crap you know what i'm saying and and to me, it's ridiculous. And I think to a degree, it's a marketing strategy. I don't think Short was ever going to retire when he did getting it. I don't think Jay-Z was going to retire the Black Album. It was in the peak of his power. I knew that Black Album, BS, was not his last album. So I don't even, I think the game talks about retiring. I've heard several MCs talking about retiring. If you're a musician, you don't retire. It's to the death, man. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And that's the way it go. You know, so I encourage any MC or any art, singer, musician, 
you know, I have people in my family play instruments and stuff like that. One of my brothers, you know, played for Anthony Hamilton for like 10 years. You know what I'm saying? And he's never going to stop playing music because musicians never stop. They, they perform to the death. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And also their health can no longer sustain the performances in the travel time and stuff like that. So I think that he should keep going. If Nas and Jay and whoever else can keep making music that they enjoy, if their fans enjoy it, fine. If a new generation of fans learn to enjoy it, older fans say, hey, I, I like my old stuff. Jay said, buy my old album. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So don't stop. You know what I'm saying? Don't stop. Too short. You never stop. And he probably won't. And you know, his music still sounds good for what he makes, you know, so, I, you know, I've, I've never been a fan of anyone talking about retirement when it comes to music or some musician. Jay Dillon was making beats on his deathbed in the hospital. These are facts. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It don't stop. He was making beats in the bed in the hospital, man. That man died as a young man. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's a musician for you. Now, if you're in it to pimp the game out, per se, and you're not serious about the music and you've made a couple of albums or mixtapes and you made some money and, and you feel like you pimp the game out of league, then you really wasn't a musician anyway. Yeah. You, you know, so that's kind of my um that's always been kind of my my take on it. And and I hope these guys all keep making music because look, you know, uh what's that group? Uh the Rolling Stones been making music since like 1972. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And they still make music. They still make new music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they tour on mostly famous stuff, but they still make music. You know what I'm saying? The Rolling Stone, a lot of these guys still make Paul McCartney, all these guys, they in their 70s, they still make music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So for hip hop, we want to say it was, they called it a fad a long time ago. Then we was able to keep hip hop alive for the last 40 plus years. And we're saying it's a real genre of music. There is no such thing as retirement. Yeah, and I, I totally agree. I think I think what what happened is it's what happens, you know, with us as human beings if we get to get to old age or whatever. Hip hop was young for a good majority of the time. Like hip hop yeah. is only what forty five now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's it's one of them things where we also as fans and even the artists that were in it didn't know what the end game was. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's true. You know, it it could have been a fad. You know what I'm saying? We were trying to yeah. enjoy it and say it's not a fad and it keeps going, which it did. Um, but we didn't know where it was gonna go. But that's where the strength of an artist like Too Short comes into play. And like what you said, Tone, is the fact that he didn't care. <laughs> you know, no, what he, I'm he, he he loves what he loves making music. He loves rapping. He loves making beats. Obviously, he loves album covers because he got a couple classics, uh, and that's something to be admired. And him putting out as much music as he did, and staying relevant to the point that sixteen albums later he gets a big hit on a big completely hit. different generation, says that he's setting an example not only for the Nas's and the Jay-Z's, but also for somebody like Drake who went and kind of piggybacked mm -hmm. that record and say, yeah. damn, Too Short is a legend, man. Look when this dude came out and look at all this work he put in. And here he is during my time with a hit, with a club hit at that. A banger, a banger. A banger. And like you said, probably his biggest record to date, 16 albums later. Um, so it's it's kind of like you know it's twofolds. It's it's fans got to realize that at some point we got to get off the, you know, if if it ain't we kind of got off that a little bit. If you know you're not young, you know you're not popping while you're still rapping. There's still some people who say that, but I think people are turning around a little bit. I mean, because you see the excitement when Jay Z and Nas drop, and they are not young, uh, per se. Uh -huh. um, but I think we as fans have to kind of start to look at people like Too Short and, and like other artists who put in work and why why is Too Short still around? Why did we feel the need on this podcast to even highlight him as a, a you know a symbol of longevity? Is because the proof is in the pudding. Everything we just named about this man's worth ethic, what he's been through, who he's collaborated with, how he's gone through the East Coast, West Coast beat, beef to 
rappers when they wasn't making money to selling out the trunk of your car to making money to everything even through his own little scandals and coming back from that yeah, yeah so he, he, he's kind of like he needs a lifetime achievement award well let me say this well you know in, in 2008 i believe it was uh he did what well, he was celebrating the hip-hop honors which was cool you know what i'm saying but you know even bigger than that and it kind of goes with what you were saying a few minutes ago I think that artists should take one thing from Too Short, and that's Too Short has tunnel vision. You know what I'm saying? He's looking straight at the, the, the goal of each one of his projects, what he's trying to do. He don't give a shit about what nobody else doing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm going to be Too Short regardless. I don't care who on the song with me, who on my album, who on tour with me. And he's toured with East Coast and West Coast guys, especially early in his career. I think Too Short has toured with Public Enemy and and all these guys before NWA, whoever, he's been around a long time. You know, so even to the point where I'm saying he he toured with Public Enemy all the way up to an MTV special came on years ago, and Lady Gaga called him out and wanted to do a song with him. And Too Short did a song with Lady Gaga, uh, along with uh, Twist and, Two, and uh, T.I. on her album Art Pop. The song called Jewels and Drugs came out in 2013. You yeah, know what I mean? I so remember. you yeah, so you got that thing going. So that just goes again to saying at one point you was doing opening up for, you know, PE and NWA and all that stuff up to the point where you, you on, on an album with Lady Gaga. Yeah. That is what longevity looks like. That is what perseverance and, you know, all of that stuff looks like. And uh, maybe at some point, you know, the album number 10, he did think about really stopping because he did 10 albums. Maybe he felt like, I don't know what else to say to them. I just did 10 albums for y'all. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So maybe it felt like he had done everything you need to do. But when you really love what you do, it might have even been just money. He might have really missed. You know, he said, can't stay away. And maybe that was real. Maybe he sat back one day and said, man, I really enjoy making my music, man. And I know my, my real fans, they love to hear something else. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know what I'm saying? And I can't hate on nobody for doing that, man. I can't. I, I, I really appreciate it because another thing real quick, Beg, is in other genres of music, we, we look at age as reverence. You know what I'm saying? You look at Stevie Wonder, you you hey, you bowed, hey, that's Stevie, dog. When you think about John Legend and all these guys, they see Stevie Wonder, they pay homage. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In hip hop is like, oh, so and so is old. Nah, dog. When if, if, if I'm a young MC and I meet, you know what I'm saying, Curtis Blow, that's supposed to be a big deal. I yeah. remember when dog first met slick rick when snoop dog first met slick rick he was like oh slick rick man i mean he was really he's like a big baby you know what i'm yeah. saying when dmx met rock him and everybody saw that video on youtube when dmx met rock him he was spitting his lyrics to him and he was just like he hugged him like 10 times man yeah. like <laughs> I, i'm rocking with you man I, just, I, I love you man i was always you know growing up it was a conflict between who the best of ck or rock or rock him so i always went with you dog you know he was just really excited yeah. You know what I'm saying? And when we see the Curtis Blows and even the two shorts, you know, these should be if J. Cole meet him, let's say he never met him, he should be excited to meet him because you know what? If you follow his blueprint, you're gonna be around a long time. Exactly. So and I think so that's kind of the, so that's the problem. Um, you know, a lot of people don't pay attention to the work. You know what I'm saying? They just look at, you know, oh, it's old the cat. Like they're looking for swag and they're not looking for the work, man, like the, the work. Now, see, they tend to do that with the Jay-Z or with the with the Nas because, you know, they were around, even though they might have been kids, you know, they were kind of around and, and our generation is so forceful, Generation X, uh, that we refuse to let anybody forget about the 90s. <laughs> so, right, we, you know, yeah, it's true. like most, most kids don't have no choice but to acknowledge these dudes because we say so. Um, but like you said, man, it should be that way, man. It should, you should look at them the same way, you know, like we know Lil' Kim don't look like Lil' Kim used to look like, but the same way, you know, Alicia Keys will look at Gladys Knight. Right. Something, that's the way Cardi B looks at, you know, Lil' Kim. And that's the way Nicki Minaj clearly does because she copied her a lot. She um, does. She, she does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, we we get into this thing where everything is, you know, us against the world thing. So it, it just becomes negative. But if there's one beacon of hope 
is too short will continuously put out music and if you you know maybe you're like yo i don't know if i can listen to 20 albums you know which albums should i listen to i would i wouldn't even say which albums you should listen to because too short is like you said man tunnel vision he kind of generally makes music that you're familiar with think of and he's probably the father of these dudes is the hey, but, 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 but. Mm -hmm. There is two though. Sorry, there is two. Life is yeah. too short. Born a Mac. Check those out though. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, he has right he has albums to you can go to, but when you talk about yeah. some albums, yeah, you can't you go know, to all of them. There, there are going to be some that are better than others, but um, I wanted to draw the connection between okay, who does well? Who does he sound like? Sometimes some people can't get there if they can't connected with something they're familiar with so if right. you know somebody like a currency you know what i'm saying who generally kind of he kind of keeps it in autopilot but people love it you know what i'm saying and yeah. it, it could constantly sound like it's probably just the same stuff but you still love it too short is like the father of that he just yeah. never get, he never gets old you know what i'm saying he always sounds fresh he always sounds like he belongs um and this dude's been around the game for so long man Leave your comments in the comment section below. You know what I'm saying? Are you a Too Short fan? When was your first time with him, you know, as far as experiencing his music? Um, you know, or if you're not a Too Short fan, why? Why Why did you, I mean, the dude got 20 albums. What was it about him that made you not pay attention to him? Um, and what do you think about longevity in the hip hop game? Dudes like Too Short, LL, Nas, and Scarface, and all these cats that, are showing and proving that uh, hip hop can continue well past what we think would be their prime. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Now we're gonna get into the part of the show where, you know, once you get done listening to them 20 albums, yeah. we suggest an album that you should go check out. You know what I'm saying? This album is something that most cats who grew up in my time, which is like the 90s, uh, know of and have and all that stuff but i just don't think they get brought up enough and that's das effects 1992 debut album dead serious mm. came out at a time where there were a number of artists you know what i'm saying that were out from the west coast to the east coast and came through parish smith and uh eric sermon epmd and had a whole different style of their own. You know what I'm saying? Adding Iggity to, to everything, or, or not just Iggity, but you know, adding adding other syllables and stutters to different words to, to come up with a flow. And they had straight from the sewer vibe, you know, everything was kind of grimy and underground and torches. And I don't know why they were down there with the torches. Maybe they was looking for the Ninja Turtles or something. Uh, but nevertheless, so dope you know both of them had locks you know not a lot of rappers were doing that back then they were just so different from what you were accustomed to seeing and hearing from mcs in 1992 as a duo that plenty of people copied them so much so that they stopped using that style which i kind of felt like was a mistake because i'm like well y'all the masters at it you show them how to do it um but nevertheless, Dead Series is their debut mm -hmm. album. Just a man, Mike Checker, they want effects. Um, dumb, dumb, like just so yeah. many dope tracks on there. And even like with the album cover, you know what I'm saying? With the neon green and the colors and stuff. And I know like on the East Coast in New York City, for the most part, around that time, and really in a couple other places too because cross colors was out and stuff like that we was dressing real colorful around that time so that album cover also kind of fit the vibe of what was going on mm. outside and you know in and around as far as what people were wearing dope debut albums they went on to put out two or three more dope albums that also don't get talked about but if you had to listen to one das effects album to understand why we enjoyed them why they should be celebrated. It is 1992's Dead Serious. Tone, uh, first of all, Dead Serious, Dots Effects, what do you think about that joint? And then what's your recommendation? Well, during the time when they was coming out, um, 
just real quick, Run DMC is my favorite rap group growing up. Then EPMD, then Tribe Called Quest. So during the time of I was still rocking with EPMD, they brought out Dolls of Fate. I thought they were dope. First album, I actually think this album is close to a classic. Very innovative, dope flows, dope beats. I mean, yeah, man, it's a dope album, man. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I, I still have the tape around here somewhere. You know what I'm saying? So I, I thought I loved everything about it when they came out. Um, and they and they didn't have to just use their Iggy style. They could when they changed it. I mean, I think they should have stuck with it anyway. But even when they changed it, they still show they could flow. They can rap. Dudes can rap. Right. You know what I'm saying? Make no mistake about it. So yeah, big up to uh, Doc Fick, man, and uh, Eric and Paris also, man. My my recommendation is from a guy I used to call it a fake slick Rick. You know what I'm saying? And my college roommate used to laugh. I used to call him that all the time. And there's no disrespect because I love this guy, man. But I used to call Dana Dane the fake slick Rick. And Dana Dane's debut. Dana Dane with Fame dropped in 1987. And honestly, man, I know every word to this album. It's one of the first tapes that I cut grass and was able to go buy my own tape. I was like 13, man. I'm I'm almost 44 I'm old, y'all. So I went and bought my own little tape of Dana Dane with Fame. And I know every word to the album. I love it. You look at the track list right now, Cinderella. Know every word. I can spit it right now. Uh, yeah, I like to uh Dev B. Day to day with fame, Delancey Street. I remember one when I first went to New York as an adult by myself. I flew up there, I hung out with some folks, and I went on Delancey Street. And when I first walked down it, it took me back to I was like, you know, this is this is what Day to Day was talking yeah. about. I I actually cop some joints in my book bag, you know, what a little shirt, a little something on Delancey Street kept it moving. I was like, well, you know, it was just cool when you see something that hip hop put you on to before you even got there. Yeah. You know, yeah. man, and that's what, you know, uh, because I call him the face slick Rick and joking because Dana Day has a very good storyteller. You know what I'm saying? He told, yeah. he told dope stories, Nightmares, was a dope song, man. Nightmare, love at first sight. So yeah, man, if you haven't heard Dana Day with fame, man, uh, just put yourself, like you said earlier, they put yourself in the mind state of how rap sounded in 85 to 87. And then listen to uh Dana Dane with Fame, man. It's a, it's a great album, man. You know what I'm saying? So big up to Dana Dane, man. I'm a, I'm a big fan, man. Yeah, Dana Dane was one of my favorites back then, man. Because dope, again, man. when you when you're young and this guy's telling stories and they're humorous and stuff like that, you know, you just kind of like you into it, you know what I'm saying? And like the Lancy Street. Uh, I remember the first time I went to Delancey Street. The thing about Delancey Street was in, in New York City is like, if you was getting a winter coat, specifically a leather, that's where you went. Yep. Then yep. Go get go get it from there. Um, not only can you get something fresh, but then when people ask you, "Yo, where you get that leather from?" You say Delancey Street. You kind of look like a baller now. Like you know what I'm saying? Like it's official. Right? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. like you you official now. You you went to the place you should go. Uh, but yeah, Nightmares of the Night. I used to love that joint. Yeah. Um, a quick story too about Dana Dane. Early two thousands, man. My my homie lived live in Brooklyn and um, near Franklin Avenue or uh, somewhere over there, somewhere mm -hmm. around the parts. And I remember him telling me before, he was like, yo, yo, Dana Dane live on my block. I be chilling with him. Yeah, he's from there. Over there. He's from there, yeah. Yeah, he's from there. Um, but, you know, this is like early 2000s. So at first, right. I'm, kinda like, I'm like, nigga, what? Like, what are you talking about? Like, Dana Dane. Because right. uh, I had been in his house plenty of times. And Show sure enough, one day I was going to his crib and he was like, Yo, there you go right there. Yo, Dan, what's up? Word. You want to talk about black don't crack? Dana Dane look exactly the same way <laughs> in 1985. He wasn't dressed the same way, which is a bonus. Uh, right. but as far as you know, his face or whatever, easily recognizable as right Dana, Dana. He was he was mad cool. Um, so salute to Dana Dane, man. One of the one of the dopest. You know, one of the dudes that kind of get forgotten in the hip hop game, yeah. um, but had a lot of hits. Um, so go out and support Too Short Music, LL Music. You know what I'm saying? Dana Dane Music and Dice Effects Music, man. Because that's what this uh, program is about. It's about you know filling you in on on the impact of these artists and not forgetting that impact that they had on the game to influence some of your favorite artists. So leave a comment in the comment section below, man. That's going to do it for us for this, man. We hope you enjoy this 
show you know what i'm saying if you watching this on youtube please know that there's an audio version just in case you can't watch it uh which is available everywhere all you got to do is search for hip-hop now whether you're on itunes or spotify or iheart radio and you'll see it within the feed every episode along with my podcast hip-hop now podcast so on behalf of myself vegas of hip-hop now podcast and a homie tone of into the dome.com where you can go read about hip-hop that's gonna do it for us go out support real hip-hop man it's, it's easy man it's easy just give them some streams you good peace peace dropping on the random